Now, I'd like to introduce uh, our speaker, the elder Elaine Khan. So, uh, everybody knows she was phenomenal uh, communication, the expert, and the career coach. Last year, she was a Cloud Level Up 2020 keynote speaker, and she mentored uh, two women's mentoring group. And this was the first time that it, uh, Cloud History that uh, we have a women the, uh, mentor group uh, and the mental coach. So I know the uh, a lot of the uh, ladies uh, Cloud member uh, benefit a lot from the Elaine coaching. And this year, um, Elaine is currently mentoring the two cycle, uh, two circle in that Cloud. One is the leadership circle, the other one is the ministry circle. So if you guys are interested the, about this two circle, please talk to Elaine after the um, after the meeting. Now, without further ado, I'm going to welcome Elaine Khan, our elder, uh, for your speech. Thank you. I'm going to turn over to Elaine. Thank you, Stephanie and Guowe and the whole team for planning this and um, getting this recorded so we can share with others as well. Happy May, everyone. We're going to focus on communication success for career growth, networking, and mentoring today. We'll start with a brief prayer. Our Father God, we honor you in our workplace. We welcome you because you are our CEO and we invite you in all that we do at work and help us to see this pandemic time that you will use from an obstacle to an opportunity. You could turn our panic into prayer and praise and you would turn our worries into your word and into worship. Help us to really count the blessings at home and uh, not just count the days that we are home, we also make our days count. So may you make this one hour count as we learn how to communicate for our career growth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So today we have a very rich content to share with you, how to communicate with success in your career growth. So when, before we go into the exact uh, detail and the technique, I like to share some basic principles and the value of how we look at work. Where we look at work with the right mindset and the right attitude to ground us with the right foundation. You know, your work matters to God. Our work isn't just for getting a paycheck and getting promotion or our own satisfaction. God cares about our work. He is involved in our everyday work. In fact, I always say we should have joy at work and remind us that our work is more than a paycheck, that our identity is not defined by how much we make, what position we have, and how fast we move in our career. And I look at my work from my 30 some years in corporate America, not just as a job, it's really a ministry where I enjoy using my talents to deliver value and model Christ-like character and help others to be successful. And it's valuable when we have this type of mindset so that our job will be much more satisfying. If your work is just for paycheck and promotion, you will be disappointed and you'll get depressed and you could get distressed. And I learned to take Jesus to work. So in my office or work area, I always have an empty seat that's reserved for Jesus. That's a reminder for me that Jesus is involved in my every conversation and every meeting. So in my 30 some years of experience, I definitely have experienced how God blessed me in solving problems, dealing with politics and difficult people, and also be a blessing to others. So I always say, thank God it's Monday. It's actually in the back of my business card. You know how we have restaurant TGIF, right? Thank God it's Friday. So someday hope you see there's a restaurant that's TGIM because I embrace going to work and I experience how God shows up and intervenes in my work. So this really helps us understand there's a whole theology of work that when we work, it's like worshiping because we experience how God shows up and help us deal with uh, many different challenges. So work isn't just secular or worldly. Work is actually sacred because we invite God 
being there. So in my work, my goal is to glorify God and bless other people. So I don't need to be a secret agent and cover up so people won't know that I'm a Christian. When I make mistake, I know to apologize. So those are valuable principles. So in our call to work ministry, we would encourage workers, whether you're employees or employers, we offer a lot of resources, helping you how to implement these values and biblical teaching into the real life in your workplace, how to equip leaders to become workplace ministers, to encourage people at work uh, and influence others, and also how to expand the many workplace ministry networks, because there are many resources out there so that we can lift out Matthew 5.16 to shine for Jesus and be sought in light. And last time we talked a lot about the shine values. So today, uh, we only do a very brief foundation and I'll do a two hour in-depth discussion in the next uh, ministry circles on May 17th, Sunday, one to three o'clock. If you're interested, uh, let me know or let Broadway know so you could join us and uh, led by other mentors like Pastor Wu and David. And I also do a lot of leadership teaching from a biblical perspective uh, on May 16 in the Apostolic Leadership Circle on Saturday from 10 to noon. If you're interested, you could let us know. And that's the background I will share. Then we'll dive into the exact communication skill on our career success. So you can see on my business card and take a screenshot of my email. You can email me if you're interested in joining those circles. And uh, you see, thank God it's Monday. This is our website. You can see in our website under the encourage uh, resources, you see many of the podcasts, interviews, uh, presentations. And then the equip will have resources to help leaders to become workplace ministers and they expand. You get to know other ministry in the workplace. Uh, that offer resource that can support you in a small group or in a large group. So I mentioned God is our CEO. We don't just go to work, report to human being, which is important. We want to bless our boss. Remember last time we talked about we want our boss to shine and we want our coworkers to be successful. Ultimately, God is our CEO. In fact, in Fortune magazine back in year 2000, that's the cover story that God is our CEO. And they interview many successful leaders, uh, executives, who are also committed Christian. In fact, one of them became our call to work conference speaker. So when we think about work, God is our CEO. When I think about career planning, we remember if God is our big boss, he's got our back. He watch over us. He knows what we should be doing now, uh, tomorrow, next year, and as I experienced in my 30 some years, and I'll share my journey with you, how has my communication helped me with my career development and my career growth? When I know that God is my CEO, I put my heart into my work as Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. And you can tell hearts is another acrostic and I'll cover that in the ministry circle and we'll not have time to cover that today. So remember, work, it's a blessing. God gave us work in Genesis 2 before Adam and Eve walked away from God and sinned against God. So God intended work as a blessing. So that's why we should have joy at work. So when I look at a career model and look at my career experience and how I mentor others, and how others have mentored me. I have defined three career tracks. You know how you have a professional track or a technical track or a management track. So I define these three career tracks based on my experience. First is I. Career track I is someone who enjoys doing one field and one field alone and very in depth. They would write books, papers and expert in that field. When I was in Bell Labs, many of my coworkers are career track I. They are so expert and they are authors and they even got Nobel Prize for the one field they work on. And then there's career track T, where it's one technology like semiconductor where I started and many of you are probably in that field as well in the Bay Area. And not only did I do technical 
R&D for semiconductor, I also did product management, marketing, and sales. And that would be career track T, where I branch out in my roles and responsibilities, in my functions. Then the career track pi, right? So that's multiple T connected. And that's when I branch out beyond semiconductor. I get into networking, data analytics, uh, consulting, content distribution. So I got into different technologies and also different roles. So there's no right or wrong to what career track is the right one for you. The most important is how God created you, how you're wired and your interest and how opportunities come around. And that's part of what we're gonna discuss for the remaining of this time to seek your career path which track would be right for you and how would you define your career growth and how do you communicate that? So in my own career of 33 years, I've done 16 jobs and I have 19 bosses. And in every career move, I consider these factors. What percentage of the current job skill, that's transferable skill that can apply to my new job in the next career move? And then what new skill can I pick up in that new job? So for example, uh, I could manage the risk and say, oh, I'm going to use 80% of my current job skill that's transferable, like project management, leadership, and bring it into the new job and pick up 20% new skill, like finance and analytics. And that would be an 80-20. That's a very conservative, good risk management versus some people who are very courageous and they are good at learning new things. And they may say, oh, I only have 20% transferable skill and pick up 80%. So it could be a range of that and make your decision. What point of career are you and what risk would you take? And when I think about career, I rather say career move instead of just job management or job move because career is a lifelong experience, lifelong journey. So it's not just a job. So this is my career journey map. And I can say, reflecting back on the 33 years working through the 16 job, every single job, I use the principle I'm gonna share with you and how that has helped me and made it very clear when to move and what job to take, who do I work for? And at the end, when we retire in December, 2017, God also made it very clear using the principle I'm gonna share with you. When to retire, how to retire, and where to retire. In fact, I retired at a point of my career in my last job that was the most successful. And it was also a job that no one wants to do. The question is, do you want to take a job that no one wants to do? And of course, I went through the principle that I'm going to share with you, and God made it clear, yes, go ahead and take this job. And at the end, uh, within three months of that last job that I took on, I got through recognition with the team and we solved the production challenge and improved the production value volume 10 times. So God made it very clear. And he, as I invite him to intervene in my work and he shows up and he helps me and equips me how to solve those problems. And my boss would say every morning, thank God is, Elaine is running this project because it's a very difficult, complex project. So throughout my 33 years in corporate America, there were times that I got promoted, there were times that my promotion got missed, and there are different career challenges. And yet, as you look at my career map, including my personal life, how I started with a very humble beginning, a very poor family, and yet with God's grace, allowed me to have opportunity to go to Ivy League universities and executive ed uh, education, all this, God is using for his glory and helping us to grow. So I experienced Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And as many of us probably love this verse quite a bit. And as you seek God in your career, every step, I truly trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding. In all my ways, acknowledge him and he will make my path straight. And he has shown me that. And I learned to let go and let God. And I continue to try my best and God really did the rest. So I'm going to show you an, my experience of these five no's 
as you plan your career and how to communicate for your career success through your growth, through networking and mentoring. So I'll start from the very bottom, which is the foundation to learn about what the options are and how do you have decision criteria to seek God's will. Is this the right position for me, the right timing and the right boss for me? So I call this seeking God's will five steps or wubuqi. So first, and this never failed me, right? I use this for every single decision, small, medium, or big size decision. Going back to the Bible, God's word, what does the Bible say? And of course, the Bible doesn't say the company name or the boss name, and yet the Bible gave me many valuable principles, wisdom, guiding me every step in making those decisions. And the second in priority order is God's spirit. As I pray, the Holy Spirit confirms and give me peace. And today I can only go through very quickly. Each one of these can go in more depth, but just to introduce to you these five steps. Third priority is God's people, people who love God and love me, like my spouse, my family, my pastor, my mentor. We can pray together and seek God and get advice. Number four in the priority order is God's circumstances. And that includes the 5B model, which I'm gonna show you next. And then research the different career options, industry options, and look at what the business and industry needs are. Where can I serve the best using my talents? And what are the pros and cons, right? Looking at the position, responsibility, the environment, where it is, how much do I get paid? All those are part of the circumstance that we would an analyze and would God open door or closed door and allow the common sense. And finally, after you go through these four steps, even if you're not sure, you would go with the Nike, just do it. Because step number five is God's sovereignty. He's in control. He won't miss a beat. He knows what's the best for you. So as we continue to walk with him, we trust and obey and leave the result to him. So those are the five steps. And each one of these, we can go more in depth to experience, but these are the guiding principles. And turns out the Alpha Bible Study Guide also have similar idea. Um, and I have a little bit more than what they cover because I included sovereignty. So they also use scripture, spirit, the saints, common sense, and the different circumstantial signs. So Matthew 5, 6, 33 really guides me and helps me when I went through my career in my family, I know always seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. And that's how I experienced when I set the right priority according to those five steps. So when we get into the first no, that's the five P. The first no, five P helps you define what you're looking for in your career, in your whole career journey. First P is your purpose. What is your purpose and vision for your life? And this 5P model applies both to your general big picture about your life, answering big life questions, and also applies to specific career decision. And I'll show you an example. So the first question is, why are you interested, right? What is the purpose and your vision? Second, is your principle. What are the guiding principle, values, and choices that would help you make decisions? And the third is your passion. What are you most interested in? What do you enjoy doing? What keeps you up at night? And is something you enjoy doing even when you don't get paid? So these first three P help you to do internal soul searching to get to know yourself. Then the fourth P starts to go external to get to know other people. We are in the people business, even though when you do engineering, we are always working with people and God is in the people business. He care about people. So I highlighted this in Burgundy because it's so important that we need to learn how to interact with people or the soft skill to influence and lead other people. And ultimately, we all want to go to the pinnacle. The fifth P is the performance. How can you excel in your work with good performance? So some of the detailed description for each one of these P. So purpose will be the foundation that gives you the courage, the 
motivation, energy to empower you because that's your vision to drive you. Your principle are the values, your character quotient, uh, wisdom from your faith, like your spiritual quotient to help you make decisions and choices. And then your passion is what really interests you, your talent. We're going to talk more about this, how you get to know your own talent, your own strength. So you're willing to serve, whether at work or in the community, with your time, your talent, and your treasure. Then with people, it's all about a soft skill, the people skill, right? Your emotional quotient, how you build meaningful, positive relationship, like we talked about last time and a lot about communication. That's why we do a communication series, right? And then ultimately performance is based on your heart skill, your intelligent quotient. How good of a mindset do you have? Your adversity quotient, overcoming challenges, how committed you are and make contributions. So for each one of these P, you can ask yourself for big picture questions such as for me, Big picture for my life, my purpose is to enjoy God's love and share God's love with other people. And my principle is based on biblical values, my culture, my family, my personality, and my passion. Uh, my passion is teaching. So even though I didn't do a professional teacher job, I did 30 years of Sunday school teaching. I do a lot of teaching at work when you help others. And now I do a lot of teaching in my retirement as well. So that's my passion. I would enjoy doing even I don't get paid. And people skill, we do a lot of training on leadership and building people relationship. And of course, uh, performance in everything we do, do our best. So how do you apply the 5P in your specific career decision? So one of my mentees who's in this uh, at Cloud Ministry, Vicky, she just came up with this. And this is our monthly mentoring meeting and this is her homework assignment. So I got her permission to share this. So her purpose is to become a good product manager. She's very gifted with user experience and UX design. So she did research to understand what a project manager job description is. And she knows that product managers need to orchestrate and lead across business, technology, and user experience. So she put in also the seven criteria and qualities that a product manager, a successful product manager, need to have. So then we put this into the 5P in a specific career decision, how the purpose is being a good product manager. The principle is she needs to be humble, teachable, to stay curious, like Steve Jobs said, Steve, stay hungry to learn and manage her time well. And her passion, uh, she did very in-depth strength finder. And she learned that she's a very good strategic thinker and creative designer, especially in user experience. So that's her passion. And she's going to use that for her product manager work. And people skills, she needs to work on communication, empathy, and leadership. And then her performance ultimately is to do a good job of this product manager job description and make a good decisions for the product, for the team, and have a good sense of ownership. So this is an example of using the 5P for career decision. The second no is to know yourself. You really need to know yourself before you plan what career you want to pursue. There are many ways to get to know yourself, especially on your strength. Don't you enjoy your work a lot more if you use your strength to do your work instead of using your weakness? As we go through the 5P model earlier, you want to do work that aligns to your purpose, principle, and your passion. So it's very important to know what your passion, your strengths are. So here are some examples of tools that you can use, Myers-Briggs, DISC, and the one I spend a lot of time using for many mentoring uh, sessions and in fact i spent two hours training an organization of staff yesterday helping them know each of their strengths using strength finder and how they build up a very good team complementing each other using each other's strength so strength finder includes 34 qualities these are all strengths aligned to these four areas in execution influencing relationship building, and strategic thinking. So one of my mentees did pay extra to get the full report of how her 1 through 34 
you can see her number one and a lot of low, uh, high uh, ranking uh, strength are in the strategic area. So you know she's a very strong uh, strategic thinker. And then how distribute across these four different domains. And they're all ranked in that, that way. And this helps you to describe who you are when you're in interviews. And we'll talk about that later on and how you use adjectives to describe your strength. And in interviews and in elevator pitch to talk about your strength. And this is actually gonna be a homework for you. And next Friday, we're gonna go through a practice session. A lot of times you learn a lot of knowledge. We want this to become your own by putting into your own stories. So we're gonna teach you how to do sore storytelling, describing to other people your strength. Because oftentimes I do hundreds of interviews over the years, hiring people and interviewing students applying to Cornell and Princeton. So we always ask, tell me about yourself. Tell me about your strength or your weakness. How do you answer them? So we're gonna train you how to use the sore storytelling approach telling them situation, obstacle, action, and result in just 30 seconds. And I would encourage you to think about in that 30 seconds, what, uh, what did you do and what did you accomplish and how did you accomplish it? And I'll give you some example. So that's sore, sore like egos, like in Isaiah 40, 31 said. And the homework assignment for you for next Friday is to think about one adjective for each in intelligent quotient like fast learner, problem solving, EQ, emotional quotient will be work well with others, good leader, influencing others, even in difficult team atmosphere, or AQ, adversity quotient in a very difficult, challenging project, aggressive timeline. So think at least one story for one of these three cues. I'll give you an example. IQ. You start with a definition what that strength is. I am a fast learner. I enjoy learning new things and solving problems on my own. One time, my boss asked us to use a compiler that we've never used before. Usually, it takes 13 weeks to study that compiler. And I took the initiative to study online for three weeks and ask experts. Then I was able to use this compiler and help my team to design our circuit and got an award for our design. So that's about 30 seconds, very clear and concise, telling people the situation, the obstacle, the action, and the result. And also, you heard me saying some numbers, 13 weeks versus three weeks, and the impact, such as using, uh, getting an award. So here's an example for AQ. And take a screenshot of this and we'll email this out, this particular example as well, for those who are interested to come back next Friday to practice. Because once you develop one for your own, it's yours. You can use it as your elevator pitch for your interview. So here's a mentee's example on adversity quotient in a very aggressive timeline. My, I'm good at executing complex projects with excellence, working well with the team, collaborating, and delivering the project on time and on budget. I took over a complex auditing project without proper handoff from the last owner. And I was challenged to complete it in 14 business days instead of the usual two months. So I pulled a cross-functional team together, established our common team goal, very focused and worked diligently as a team. As a result, we finished this very aggressive project in 10 business days, four days ahead of schedule. So this will be an example, a good template for you to develop your 30 second source story for IQ, EQ, and AQ. In corporate America, these are some examples of strengths as you get to know yourself. These are strengths that you want to develop and work toward and building on what you may find out from Strength Finder or other tools. Your character, character quotient, focus on results, not afraid of challenges, your adversity quotient, leading change, not afraid of change. As we know, change is probably the only constant in this world, and that's called transformation quotient, XQ. 
internet, uh, interpersonal skill, your emotional quotient, and then your personal capability, your IQ. All these are very basic to become an extraordinary leader. And this is typical of what corporate America would be looking for in your strength. And as you get to know your strength and as you perform in your work, you get, people will get to know you with your personal brand. How people perceive you, how people think about you is your personal brand. So I enjoy making a cross stick and I would always make a cross stick for other people for their birthday or service anniversary using their name. So over the years, people have used my name to give me a gift as well. So this is an example using Elaine to really show what they believe my personal brand is. So this is a VP. Uh, when I celebrated my 30th anniversary at my company, this VP came up with this Elaine acrostic. Enthusiastic for work, love of people, always working to find new ways. Intelligence drives your decision making. No, it's not in your vocabulary endless commitment to mentoring. So that's how he perceives me. And that is my personal brand to him. And the way that I've worked in my 30 some years, even though I had 16 job changes, most of them I didn't pursue to make the change. Many of them because leaders and mentors and my sponsors know my personal brand, know my strength in what I accomplish and how I accomplish things and what's in my DNA and how God created me. And these are examples of my strength and personal brand. And these will be on the top of my resume on how I summarize my key skill, not just what I did, but how I did them in terms of um, purpose-driven, visionary leader, execution with excellence. And that's how when they know my personal brand and many times they would come and identify an opportunity and say, this will really work well for you. In fact, my last job, the job that no one wants to take, my boss always said that he tried to hire me for three years and he finally hired me. And he knows that job is very complex project for a new leading product and really take unique skill. And exactly because of this personal brand and my skill that he said is customized and tailored to my uh, uh, strength. So my personal skill and strength finder is A, B, C, D, R. And in fact, I'm using these five strengths very well in my job and in my ministry. And that's why I enjoy my work so much, right? A is achiever, B is belief system, C is connectedness, connecting people and facts. D is developer, developing people, help them to be successful. R is responsibility. So those are my five top strength. So when I retired in late 2017, uh, this is the boss who hired me in that final job and the last job that is really the most successful. And he actually surprised me. He has a big retirement party asking everyone invited to the retirement party to use my name, Elin Kung, as an acrostic. And all of this is personal brand. So you can do that exercise for yourself or invite others to do that for you and what do they think about your brand. Another way to get to know yourself is SWOT. For those of us who do product management and marketing, you know doing SWOT for products, right? Get to know your product strength, your weakness, and also what are some opportunities in the marketplace? What are some external threats? A few years ago, I started to use this for myself. And I'm giving this to you as the second homework assignment. And all my mentees also would do this as well. You would think about your own internal style, internal personality, what are your strengths? And oftentimes people put the strength finder here. And then what is your weakness? Areas that you need to work on in your internal personal style. So sometimes your weakness could be overusing your strength, isn't it? and that would become weakness. For example, demanding and high uh, quality standard, those are good. And yet if I overdo it, I become, it become a weakness, right? And then opportunity and threat are things that you need to grow externally when you interact with other people, such as leadership and communication. And threats will be things that may be blind spots externally that you're not aware of. What could be a threat? 
And I use this as a tool for my own reflection, self-aware, get to know myself. Also, others aware, what do others think? So it will be a 360 degree view. So I've used this over the years with my boss, with my mentors, with my subordinates and my coworkers. So I have a very healthy 360 degree view from everyone. You're using your strength. In fact, with my 16 jobs and 19 bosses, there was one boss who spent a whole hour with me talking about my strength. That was such a good feeling. One hour just talking about my strength. And are we using the strength in the work, right? That's when you're most satisfying. So I use this tool to track my progress over time. Am I improving? Am I building on my opportunities? And there was one time I had a fatal flaw. That was a threat. And then later on over time, my boss said, oh, this is no longer a fatal flaw. You have improved. So this is a very valuable tool. So the third no is to know others. After you know your 5P, you know yourself. Now you want to get to know other people. That's building relationship with others through networking, through mentoring and team building. As Proverbs 15, 22 remind us, fails plan for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. And you also remember in the five step of seeking God's will, number three, it's God's people people who love God and love you. So getting to know others is very important in our career development and how we use our communication skill in building those relationships. So networking, sometimes people think networking and equate them as looking for jobs. That is wrong. Networking is not about serving yourself or helping you to find jobs. Networking is building many meaningful relationship selectively and also a new term i learned net serve it's not just to work for yourself but also work for others and serve others with a servant heart so networking is an art of getting advice and counsel from other people while you can also help others it does include helping you to locate to land on a job to succeed in your job to transition from one career to another and recover from your career. You could be at different points in your career journey. Ultimately, relationship comes first. Like I said, God is in the people business and we should be in the people business. It's when in Chinese is a very good phrase, right? So when you have good relationship, there will be no problem. And that's why soft skill is so important. When you make connection with people and build networks, there's always the face-to-face, -face, and now I know it's difficult when we're staying home, at least with virtual face-to-face, -face, eye contact, hand-to-hand, one-on-one. So last session, we talked a lot about one-on-one, -on -one, and these, those principles would also apply in your networking. So the goal is to build and develop meaningful relationships. So don't just collect a ton of business cards or a ton of LinkedIn contacts. Make sure you're very selective and strategic in identifying the right context and right relationship in helping each other and getting help from them. Uh, plan to meet one person a month and make a meaningful relationship, whether from online and then later on become offline relationship. And prepare in networking. And there's a lot of detail how to prepare. And I'll go through some principles today very quickly. Uh, also, make sure you ask two questions and ready to listen. When you're in a networking session, and I've done a lot of those I call informational interview, and I've mentors at work, would usually just be 30 minutes and maybe once a year, sometimes maybe organic, and they would just give me advice or sometimes how I can help them. And that 30 minutes, make sure while I tell them who I am, and that's the next step, right, known by others. Also, I want to listen to what advice they have to, do, to share with me. So it will be about half and half the time. And make sure we do follow up when you have a networking opportunity, you get to know them, spend time with them, and make sure to thank them for their time. So these are quick principles on making networking work for others and work for yourself. So you own the responsibility of making the networking meaningful before, during, and after. The networking can be a big group setting and could be a one-on-one -on -one building relationship. So these are the quick guiding principles 
as a networking, as an acrostic, right? Remember the name. In the old days when the business card, I would always write down stories that they tell me or characteristic about them in the back of the business card. And now, of course, we can take notes in all the different uh, tools that we have, electronic tools. Always remember people's name. Enthusiastic. Enthusiasm is contagious. When they feel that you're positive, they remember you with a good impression and associate with your brand. Teachable heart, that you're willing to learn, that you are eager to be mentored. And I tell you, over the years, as we build relationship and selectively identify mentors, I've never had a mentor who would say, no, I don't want to mentor you. When you pray about it, when you find the right chemistry and the right match, you know it's the right person and you have the opportunity to ask them, they would usually say yes. W is winning with encouragement in the way we communicate, like we discussed last time, and there are many more practical skills. How are you positive? And for example, how do you establish common ground to make sure what you communicate is win-win, clear and concise? open-minded and also offer to help, not just to receive help from others and learn to relate to others, right? In the common interest, in topics that we can talk about, whether it's the society, the pandemic and learn about the world news so that we can discuss and, you know, we don't talk about politics and religion. Those are two things you want to avoid. However, we, don't, we do want to relate to others, get to know perhaps their family and their interests. And then have regular follow-up if this is the right person you want to continue to network and mentor with. Kind and considerate to set boundary. Don't take too much time. That's why my time is usually 30 minutes. And one of the leaders who now just became the CEO of AT&T, John Stanky, I had the honor and the privilege of um, having a networking session, a one-on-one -on -one with him. And he actually gave me 45 minutes, which I'm really grateful for. In fact, he was a very outstanding leader. And he um, oftentimes when I email him with some quick question, he would respond with very thoughtful and thorough uh, advice. I is impression making. So when you learn the source story and this 30 second elevator pitch, those will be the story that you can easily talk to. And one time, uh, I was in the elevator with my uh, previous CEO of AT&T um, and the building was only five floors. So the elevator ride wasn't very long. So how did I make that elevator ride an impression making uh, experience? So there were two things that we talked about because we shared these two interests. One, we're both Sunday school teacher. So we talked about that experience Two. He is really good with leadership training. He gave us very unique leadership training opportunity. And I told him how that has helped me. So that is example of elevator pitch on things that people are most interested in. And then noble character, integrity, doing the same thing, same right thing, whether people are watching or not. And then G, go the extra mile. Be ready to prepare, do a good job of networking, and then follow up afterwards. So usually networks include these six different roles. In my network, I have these six different roles of people. There are people who are connector, connecting me with others. Realist, they would tell me like it is. They would tell me the truth, they won't sugarcoat, tell me exactly what I need to know. Industry insider, they know what's the next big app, what's the killer app, what is the next big thing, right? Oftentimes when we pursue our career goals and career move, uh, in fact, it was Mr. John Stanky, he told me, he said to follow the money. It isn't about following the salary, the pay. It's about following where the industry is investing the most money, where the company is investing the most, and where the industry is generating the most revenue. You follow the money. So that's where the industry insider will help you. M is a mentor. And I encourage every one of you to have at least one mentor and one mentee, because you can always help others as well. And guess what? When you help others, you learn and you grow also. And then P is a partner that you work with all your allies and coworkers. And S is sponsor. Sponsor is like an advocate. He or she are many levels higher than you and they see the big picture. 
So this is the network of CRIMS. So I would encourage you as you network, make meaningful, meaningful relationship in helping them and how they may play these, one of these six roles. Some networks may play multiple of these roles. Someone asked me, can one person be all of these? Perhaps not all, maybe multiple. And then what does it take to be a good mentor and a good mentee? These are some best practice I've learned over the 30 some years being mentor and mentoring other people. So M is to model after these leaders who are crims or partners for us. And that the mentoring should encourage us to grow in our career using our strengths and nurture areas that we need to develop because that's what the realist will tell you, what you need to grow and be better. What are some threats and opportunity you need to work on? And make sure your talent matches with the business and industry need. So when we look at our career growth, it isn't just about me, myself, and I. It's about how I can contribute the most to this organization, to this business, to this industry, using my talent, using my strength. So it's very important that it's a good match. O is observe confidentiality. It's very important to keep that trusted relationship in a mentoring, um, between a mentor and a mentee, unless you have permission from them to share. R is regular proactive follow-up. So it's the mentee's responsibility to set the schedule, set the agenda, to prepare, clearly explain what the goal is. And all my mentees would do that. And when we meet once a month, and every week I meet with a few mentees, and they would come prepared. What did we learn last time? They summarize that. And what action did they take? What's the progress? What are we learning this time? And then what's the next? So that's how you make progress. So those are some best practice. And then as we know other people, we network and mentor, we build relationship. And this is where we can use it to help build relationship with our leader, our boss, or our coworkers or subordinates by respecting the people that are important to them being enthusiastic with what they're enthusiastic about, know what they're most interested in, what are their priorities, and available to help them. Last time when we talked about one-on-one -on -one and working with our boss and build positive relationship, we know our leaders do have weakness. So we need to learn how to help influence them and build them up by working with the weakness and how to communicate. So in the future, I could, discuss how to have difficult conversations, including telling people what to improve. So that would require some technique. And then how to earn your leader's trust, um, understand and connect to their interests, hopefully their mutual interests, and have an obedient spirit, right? Obeying and respecting the authority and doing what they ask you to do, of course. That's good for the business, that's ethical. And then a nurturing character, always ready to nurture others, to develop and help others to be better, and a serving heart. And align and listen to their heartbeat, right? What keeps them up at night? What is most interesting and a top priority for them? And then support what is their vision that's inspiring to them, and also get to know their personality. So when I put these 12 together, it stands for relationship. So that really are tricks and best practice helping us to uh, build positive relationships. So the number four no is known by others. As you build network and build relationship, how do you let other people get to know you? So I'm gonna give you some examples and we're gonna run out of time. I won't be able to go into some detail for resume and interview, but I'll give you some quick example on journey map. And in the 30 minutes I meet with my mentor, or in this networking one-on-one. -on -one. I would go in very well prepared. And many of us uh, use, speak English as a second language. So I use slides, I use visual aid. I don't just bring in my resume. Because when you have this mentoring session, you want them to get to know who you are in a very short time, in minutes, using your elevator pitch and this journey map that I'm gonna show you as an example. And then with clear question that you ask them, Four. Remember, we want to prepare at least two questions and then listen to them for their advice and coaching and also look for ways that you can help them. 
So how to be known by others? Example, you come up with creative ways to show people what your journey map is in your personal and your professional life. What is your summary of experience? What are your SWOT strength uh, and strength finder? And of course, you need to pray and feel comfortable. You may not be ready to tell them your whole SWOT in the first meeting, maybe a subsequent meeting. So you need to pray with wisdom when to share with what, but minimally you want to share with them a very basic overview of your journey map, like I showed you before, and I'll give you some more example. And then over time, you can tell them, what do people say about you? What's your personal brand? What are some recommendations or performance review comments? What are some references so they know how people view you? And what are your career interests, your personal interests? And then eventually have a very compelling resume and very um, compelling way of doing interviews. And of course, using tools like LinkedIn. So that last one, we won't have time to cover today. So here are some examples of journey map. Here's recently one very good speaker has shared. Um, she shared how her journey map isn't just about the career, it's actually also including her faith. And this is her own journey, not based on salary and promotion, it's really based on how she wants to know God better and get to know herself better. And she has a very cool way of uh, using 5C to describe how she's created when she worked for Apple and using her creativity and how she's called to serve in China. And she actually took her uh, career move to work in China with Apple. And then she built up her council by going to business school in Northwestern. And then she worked for Nike and how she become even better and better and consecrate and set herself apart. And then she continued to grow and she's going to work for Facebook. So this is a very good way of mapping her journey um, to tell the story of her career journey. And here's a more typical way you can show by way of sharing your functional experience, services, and uh, global reach if you work in different ge ge geographic regions. Uh, to very quickly show what I call resume on a PowerPoint instead of a detailed resume. And here's another example. Uh, someone showed their years, location, their roles, and some key accomplishment. And in the key accomplishment, it's very important to make sure we put numbers, right? As you heard me say the source story, it's not a matter of all the things that you did. You've got to show what the things you did, what impact results, how much revenue, how much time, savings, cost savings, how big of a team, make sure your resume has numbers to show. So this is an executive who's also my mentor, very good way that she show her career journey in the responsibilities and highlighting her strength, her passion, um, and awards and experience and education. So this is another example. And then she would go on to saying, not just success, but also through failure and how she grow. And I really like the way she used this from different jobs throughout her career journey, what she learned from them. And ultimately she concluded when you are uncomfort uncomfortable and that's when you are growing. So that's a very special way of showing. Then I, over time when I get to know the mentor, or my sponsor, I will share from time to time recommendations or references. So this happened to be an example of a subordinate on my team. She, he's a very strong performer. He was leaving and he sent me this message that I shared with my boss and then my boss shared with his boss. And that's um, not so much bragging, uh, really sharing how the team think about you. And this is um, balancing being humble and being honest to share and let people know how others view about you. And then when I was leading a very big project um, at a corporate CEO level, um, really uh, lighting up 55 million businesses with fiber across the country, that was a big project. And these are some um, recommendations and recognition from my uh, senior leadership. So those would be things that I would include to share with my advisors or sponsors. So finally on resume and interview, I'm gonna skip those because uh, we're running out of time. 
and I'm going to jump right into our homework assignment. So this is what we're going to do next Friday. Next Friday, the same time from 12 to 1 Pacific. And please do a QR code scan and take a screenshot of this slide if you are not on the at cloud email distribution. We're going to send these three slides to you or you can take a screenshot to prepare you for practice session next week. We're going to have the first 30 minutes next Friday for every one of you in a small group of three to take turn to practice your SOAR and your SWAT. And then the final 30 minutes will be in a large group interacting with me and I will answer questions and address some of the challenges. So please take a screenshot of this and special the QR code if you're not in the cloud email distribution. This is the second slide that we'll send to you to give you the exact example of a SOAR story. And I encourage you to prepare one for IQ, one for EQ, one for AQ. And that you'll write up the keywords and practice it. And then when we come together next Friday, you can turn within your small group of three to practice and give observation and suggestion for each other and then interact with me in the large group. And the second homework assignment, and this third slide will send you, an email is the SWAT. So this is my own SWAT. I'm being very transparent and honest to share with you. And then we would like you to do the SWAT. And this is a powerful tool to prepare you for interview, for monitoring your own growth, for your mentoring session, um, to really be self-aware and others aware. So I'm going to stop here. I cover a lot of content and now we want to open up for questions. Hi everyone. Oh, uh, and um, Stephanie, please. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Well, th thank you, Elaine, for the uh, again the very, very, very uh, excellent uh, uh, speech. I hope you guys have uh, put a lot of notes, make a lot of notes, and also have a good question. Yeah, please uh, uh, turn on your uh, microphone, okay, uh, and uh, speak up your question. We have uh, uh, about 20 minutes uh, to cover your question. The meeting is ended. Uh, actually, the uh, one. One in fifteen. So we have any about, question in the chat? Yeah, uh, I saw there's a, a chat question. Uh, that's a good question. So uh, uh, there's a uh, a guy asking the uh, how to networking with confidence. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, he feel like uh, he doesn't have the person. He doesn't know the person very well, and mm -hmm. he worry that uh, he will offend uh, uh, people by asking the wrong question. Yeah. Uh, so he's asking that how do we get uh, this networking started? Very good. Thank you. So it really takes time to build up your confidence. And especially for us not born in America, we may feel uncomfortable going to uh, happy hours or show show hours and then really opening up or ice breaking conversation. So it takes practice. You learn to ask some polite question without offending others, right? Typically, some of my favorite would be, oh, what are your recent vacation? Or what's your uh, memorable trip to get to know each other? Or of course, in a professional setting, uh, what kind of responsibility do you have? And how is that industry uh, handling the pandemic uh, impacts? So you prepare to ask some smart questions, not quote unquote dumb questions, and takes practice. And like in this networking slide shows you, right? You want to warm up to it. Sometimes you may be in a networking meeting, two or three people may be together, you listen and stand. And then at the right time, ask with some response and the right questions. Um, and of course, the way that you uh, present yourself, right? professional, your body language, your eye contact, um, or represent who you are and your personal brand. So it takes practice to build up your confidence, even doing some own self-networking at home, looking at the mirror, practicing some questions, such as, you know, asking what they do, how's the uh, responsibility, and, you know, practicing. Uh, slowly speaking, and also practicing your own elevator pitch, right? It's a two-way communication. Get to know others and let others know you by way of uh, sharing what's, if you are asking people about favorite vacation, you're ready to share what your favorite vacation is. 
And this is also an opportunity to help others because they might not have been there and then you can help them that way. So it takes practice, um, not afraid of making mistakes. I've made many mistakes and um, learn from mistakes and learn from others. Learn from how other people, especially the native American co-workers, how they network. And of course, you learn from the good, bad, and the ugly, right? Where you learn to do the right things and learn not to do the wrong things. Another question? Yes, Yelena. Okay, keep in mind, this is a, a communication class, okay? So everybody, please speak out. Thank Someone you. Was saying? Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hey Elaine, this is Shaming. I really appreciate your excellent presentation today. I think earlier you mentioned about one common. In your networking, there are two things you don't talk about. I thought that was uh, very interesting to hear you talk about that because I know you have a passion and a lot of us here might have the passion to share in the, to share the gospel. And so therefore, when you say the two things you don't mention, politics and religion, would you want to elaborate on that? Because of course, that's, thank you for that question. <laughs> So in general, in a broad setting of networking, you don't use, so like the person who just asked the question, how can I build my confidence? And those general topics, you don't usually talk about, they call taboos, right? Politics and religion. However, when you build relationship and get to know the person better, to be honest with you, many of my mentors over the 30 some years in my company are Christians. And it's also because of our same Christian faith that really qualify the criteria of why I would select certain mentor. And in fact, some of them became advisors to my call to work ministry. Some of them were speakers at my call to work conference. At the same time, many of them are not Christians. Some may be Catholic. So there are some mentors. I have opportunities to share the gospel when in fact, one of my boss uh, one time gave me a ride to Bible study fellowship, BSF, and it's all God ordained moment. Uh, Monday afternoon, I was rushing, taking an elevator to go uh, leave the building to go to BSF. And my boss say, where are you going? Oh, you're going to tr this train station? Oh, this is near my home. I'll give you a ride. In fact, he drove a uh, Porsche. It's my only time in my life riding on a Porsche. And during that car ride, and he knew a little bit about my background, and he asked me, so Elaine, what is your turning point? Wow, if he asked me what's my turning point, that's my opportunity to share the gospel with him on the car ride to the train station on my way to Bible Study Fellowship. So that was Monday night at 6.30. Tuesday morning at 7 a.m., he sent me a text. He's not quite accepting Christ yet, but he responded. He thought about what I shared. He sent me a text and he said, he looked at other TED talk about meaning of life and similar to what I share. And yet he said, what I shared with him was more profound, very structured and very meaningful. So that was very encouraging. And I still keep in touch with him at least once a year in email and pray for him. So, you know, just like first Peter 3.15 said, as we behave and model Christ at work and people will see us being different and they will ask us for the reason for our hope and we can respond with gentleness and respect. And I have many opportunities like that at work as we model Christ, as we take Jesus to work. And I'll discuss a lot more in detail on the May 17 Sunday session. But thank you, Shen Ming, for that question. So I want to help clarify the distinction. When to talk about religion, when you don't. Any other question? Uh, yes, hey, uh, Elder hey. Yelen. Hey, Jerry, ni hao. Hi, ni hao, ni hao. So I'm going to ask the question in English form for everybody's understanding. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is about the work setting in today's global work environment. I know globalism is not very popular these days, but multi-regional, multicultural, multi-time zone and multiple stakeholders, uh, much more or many more stakeholders that we have to work with closely. They are not in our command chain. Right. In fact, it's very normal. I would like to hear more from you, uh, your experience or your words of advice to 
many people who need to work cross region, cross culture, cross time zone, mm-hmm. and different ways to work with or communicate or influence mm-hmm. folks who are not in our command chain. So gotcha. can you maybe share a little bit of that, please? And I'll probably share some of that uh, in my future session as well. Thank you. That would be great, Jerry. Thank you. Jerry is a really renowned leader and a mentor. I co-mentor with him and Sam on the leadership circle. Uh, so the next one is May 16, when I'll be sharing for two hours on that uh, Saturday morning, 10 to 12. So we are in a global economy and the world's getting smaller. We would need to be sensitive and aware of the different culture and the diversity that we're in. So we need to be respectful of how we are different, not just in our personality and our strength, also in our culture. So in my company, Fortune 500, we have, I have team members around the world in some of my jobs, in Asia, Europe, Latin America, and we don't always see each other. So there are many um, experience that I've learned how to make sure I come from their perspective and meet them where they are, understand their culture and their constraint so that I don't just think that what I do, what I'm saying is always right. So I learn to be humble as a leader and also have courage to approach um, our differences. So when we are not together, we need to work really smart in a virtual way. In fact, all of us are now working virtual, right, from home. How to use the different technology to build relationships still. So I value highly one-on-one, as I shared with you last time. Not just with my boss, I value one-on-one with my subordinates and one-on-one with my peers, especially in the context of a global economy. How you could try to draw the distance closer, not necessarily physical, but virtual, by way of building trusted and meaningful relationship. So when you have a mindset of meeting people where they are and helping people to be successful, you are an attractive person that people want to get along with. So my definition of leadership is the ability to influence others to be their best for the greater good, aligned to a vision. So that is where can help us cross cultural diversity barriers, when you think from their perspective, how can I help you to be successful? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Any other question? Okay, there's uh, some of the chat question. Uh, maybe I can uh, Please. Um, ask. Yeah, there's a two similar questions from the audience. The first audience wants to know the um, Elaine, when, how, how old uh, uh, will you start the, the, your, uh, to do your mentor uh, with uh, such a full confidence? And I think the second question is a, a very similar. Uh, she wants to know, uh, she uh, are in the uh, like group of 10 to 20 people in the meeting, and how do, how do uh, uh, the audience present herself uh, or himself without fear uh, and the confidence and without offend others? Good, good. Uh, the first question is about how old was yeah, I? How you a mentor, uh, become mm-hmm. a mentor. When did I become a mentor? Yeah, mentor, sorry, yes. Oh, okay. So in my 20s, I became a mentor. And to be honest with you, if I look back, I might have been a mentor even when I was a teenager because I did tutoring. So all of us should be a mentor regardless of your age, right? Even because there's always someone younger than you someone newer than you, and it's very powerful when you mentor people. And then for the age of people I mentor, you know, all different ages, right now today, one of my youngest mentees is a high school student. In fact, she's the most diligent, and she worked really hard, and her uh, mentoring meeting summary is outstanding, and she practiced her memory verse with her whole family, so I'm very proud of her. So, yeah, any different ages uh, as mentee, and then any one of us at any age should be a mentor. I started when I was at a young age. And then in a meeting of 20 people, I might have given you that example last time. So in my company over the years, oftentimes they're more male than female and more uh, non-Asian than Asian. So it's not been easy for me. And yet I have learned how to speak with confidence and speak in an assertive way, not necessarily aggressive way. 
There may be people who have a stereotype and think that I was aggressive when I spoke up because they may think, oh, Elaine, young Asian woman should be just quiet and listen to others, right? And yet if we're professional, positive, so it takes time to build up that confidence, just like the question about networking. So I practice and pray what question and what comment to say and do my homework and research and say, yeah, this would be a good point to make as a suggestion. I always talk about this story one time in a meeting of 20 people exactly. I was a young engineer and I was very clear on a suggestion. I wanted to make that suggestion. And of course, again, takes confidence, takes practice and say the suggestion carefully and how not to offend others. In a future talk, I will discuss some techniques, how to uh, communicate in different in you know difficult situations right what are some skills so i would make a suggestion and then others quicken no one make any comment as if i was invisible they don't see me they don't hear me nothing and then a minute later john smith just give him a name another co-worker a guy an american made the same suggestion and everyone say whoa what a good idea so what do I do, right? I don't get mad. I learn my EQ lesson, take the high road. I say, John, thank you for agreeing with my suggestion. Let's work on this suggestion together and make it su successful, right? So we need a lot of wisdom from God's word, like Matthew 10, 16, how to be shrewd like a snake, innocent like a dove. And I had to practice this every day, Romans 12. So we'll discuss that more in the future uh, mentoring circle. Awesome, excellent. Okay, we got the two minutes. So, the, do you want to take one more question? Yeah. Okay. Any so more anybody have? Chat? We take one more. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, please. Hello. Ah, thank you for your talk. It's very helpful. So, you mentioned the mental. So, in company, so uh, do you let your boss know who your mentor is, and mm -hmm. do you think what? Well, he is responsible to that. Good question, Mei Hua. Thank you. So there are a couple of points I want to make about that, and we'll make this as a last question. You do not need to tell your boss who your mentors are. And this is very important. Uh, sometimes they may feel that you drop a name. For example, I met with this new CEO of the company. Um, so you need to be very careful. You don't want them to feel that you're going ahead of them. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some occasions that you could share because there are also uh, organizations that encourage skip level and that's okay. So you need to seek wisdom when to share, when not to share. On the other hand, if you are looking for jobs, there are oftentimes people ask, if you are changing from one organization to another, do you tell your boss, right? So that's another related question. In those cases, when you're ready to apply the job, you do need to tell your job, your boss. And that's also what we talked about last time on the one-on-one -on -one with your boss. It should be part of your career discussion with your boss from time to time. And it shouldn't be a surprise. And it shouldn't be running away from the organization. It's more for growing your career and growing your strength to better contribute to the company. So always think about your career move from the context of better contribute to the company not just about me, myself, and I, and growing your own career and your position. Okay, good, thank well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Great, I think we are in the, on the top of the hour. So, uh, Elaine, do you have any final announcement or something that you want to wrap up? Yes, yeah, so uh, next uh, Friday, hope to see you here for practice to make these your own. And then uh, after next Friday, I will be leading, co-leading the leadership circle on May 16. I'll be speaking for two hours and interacting with the mentees. So if you're interested, let me know or any one of the at Cloud co-worker know and uh, take certain commitment to be a mentee to join the subsequent sessions every month. And then the mission ministry circle on May 17 on Sunday, uh, that's when I go much deeper. How do we respond to God as God has called us to work? How can we integrate our faith in our workplace. So this again is my business card and my email if you need to send email and let me know that you would like to join. Thank you, Stephanie. Go away. Thank you. All right.
right. Well, thank you, everyone, and thank you, Elaine, for excellent this section. That we really learned a lot. So we hope to to see you, uh, Elaine, and the, um, everyone on the next week on the May 8 for the practice section. All right. So have the good, uh, relaxed Friday and a great weekend. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Hi. Yeah, thank you so much, Elder Elaine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, you. Okay, I will be ending the meeting now. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much. Very nice. Thanks.